Hey y'all. So tonight we are talking about planning to make 2022 your best financial year yet. Period. We are talking about planning to make 2022 your best financial year yet. So if you're just joining, make sure you tag a friend, send this out to somebody because tonight's live is going to be super duper good. Really, really good. I know at the beginning of the year, we make these great plans about how we want to do a whole lot this year, how we want to make changes in our financial situation. But sometimes as the year progresses, we kind of either forget about our goals or we probably didn't really have goals to start with. So they just like fall to the wayside. But tonight I'm going to tell you how to plan and prepare to make this year your best financial year yet. So tonight's conversation is sponsored by my planner, the For Executors Only Planner. So this is a planner that I created so that more people can be consistent and intentional. I don't want us to procrastinate another day. I don't want us to like really build up that habit of um, of procrastinating when we know that we have things that we want to do, dreams that we want to accomplish, and all of that good stuff. Hey, Vic. So as y'all are coming in, make sure you tag a friend, invite a friend, and we're going to hop right into this conversation. So last week, I talked about basically how to stop procrastinating and be more consistent. And the first thing that I said was everything starts with a plan. And I told y'all about one of my favorite scriptures, which is Proverbs 21, 5. And it says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. So with that, beginning with a plan, what do you even want your financial situation to look like? I don't want us to be very general and broad with saying, oh, I just want to be in a better financial situation. No, what does that look like? Is there debts that you want to pay down? Do you want to increase your income? Do you want to start investing? Do you want to save more money? Do you want to build up your emergency fund? So number one, straight off the, straight off the gate is have a plan. Begin with a plan. Have your goals and be very specific with your goals. So don't just say, I want to increase my income. How much do you want to increase your income? Because a lot of people, they're out here getting part-time jobs or second jobs when you can really just go to your current employer and negotiate and ask for a raise. So how you move, how strategic you are, how creative you are, it all goes back to your goals. So be very specific with your goals and know that you can't accomplish everything overnight but i promise you if you write it down on paper you will work and make it happen so that's the first thing first same thing as last week begin with the plan you have to start with your plan know what you want to accomplish so tonight as far as making 2022 your best financial year yet i'm going to be talking to basically three different people so people who want to pay off debt people who want to increase your income, and people who want to start saving money consistently. So the reason why I chose those three things is because a lot of the questions that I always have are in regards to debt, in regards to making more money, or in regards to saving money. And I feel like those three things, if we can kind of get those under wraps, we can be well on our way to financial freedom and really living the lives that we desire. When you think about money, money is not like, a lot of people say they want money, but they don't really want money. They want time freedom. They want to be able to take their kids on vacation. They want to be able to vacation themselves. They want to be able to give freely. They want to be able to go on, go on the store and get whatever they want without looking at their bank account. So as you think about or as you listen to what I'm talking about tonight, I will challenge you to think about what it is that you really want. So not the money per se, but what's on the other side of the money that you want. So not the money, but what's on the other side of the money. And as I am going through this conversation, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the chat. Because, of course, I want it to be very interactive. And I want y'all to gain something from this conversation that is broad in general and can help a whole lot of people. But if you have a specific question that's tailored towards your, com your situation, just drop it and I'll be sure to answer. So first thing first, paying off debt. I believe if you want to pay off your debt, if you want to increase your income, if you want to start saving more money, it's going to start with budgeting. Point blank period. A lot of people avoid budgeting when it is the most critical thing that you must do. Budgeting is your financial foundation, period. It is your way to look at 
what you have coming in versus what you have leaving out. So in each one of my planners, and I want to show y'all really quick. In each one of my planners, I have a section called manage your money. So your money isn't managing you. And essentially, I want y'all to really think about that because if you don't budget your money, if you are not managing your money, your money is managing you. Your money is telling you where you can go, what you can eat. So much stuff because you don't have a grip on your budget. And all a budget is, is your financial GPS. So the same way we type in an address in our phones and it gives us directions from point A to point B, that's the same thing with your budget. You are getting money coming into you. Now, it is your responsibility to tell your money exactly where you want it to go, period. And every time you get paid, you need to budget. So if you get paid biweekly, you need a plan for your money. If you get paid once a week, you need a plan for your money. If you get paid once a month, you need a plan for your money. Let's throw the cookie cutter monthly budgets in the trash. If you don't get paid monthly, you should not be budgeting monthly. Because like I said, your budget is simply your financial GPS. So every time you get income coming in, you need to make a plan for the money. If you are a full-time entrepreneur like me and you don't kind of get paid on a two weeks or a, um, I would just say like a consistent basis, like you know a check is coming in, then have a money date once a week. My time is Sundays, every Sunday. I'm looking at what came into my business, what I spent on my business, my personal finances, I'm reflecting on my past week and I'm making plans for the upcoming week. And that takes me an hour max, sometimes not even that long. So I want us to get into the habit of taking the time to plan, taking the time to plan. A lot of the things we don't see in our lives, we don't see manifest because we're not taking the time to write down the vision and make it plain. Write down the vision and make it plain. Do you know what you're working towards? Because you can say all day, oh, I want this to be different. Oh, I want this to be better. But do you really? Do you really? So just take an hour out of your day. An hour out of your day. Once a week. If you don't get paid, like, you know, consistently. But if you do get paid consistently, like every two weeks or once a month or once a week, you have a nine to five or something like that. Make it a priority to budget your money because that is going to help you. Pay off debt is going to help you increase your income and it's going to help you start saving money. So, like I said, with that section in the For Executors Only Planner, the Manage Your Money section, inside of the planner, it has how to create a lifestyle budget. And then on the other side over here, what is a lifestyle budget and how it is really outlined? So your income versus your expenses and then four ways to allocate your money. So for short, I call it SSIG. So there are only four ways to use your money as a tool. Save, spend, invest, and give. Save, spend, invest, and give. So Kiani 2019, I know I have a brand called The Responsible Home Girl. Y'all look at me as I as The Responsible Home Girl, but I didn't just arrive here. It was a point in my life where I was making my money, I was spending my money, And I was barely saving my money. So I'm going to say that again. 2019, Kiani was the irresponsible homegirl. I was making money. I had two jobs. Was a full-time student. Y'all working so hard. Was super duper tired. I was making my money. I was spending my money. I was the full set queen. Oh, we're going to a party? I need me a new outfit. I need to get my hair done. I need new accessories. I'm going out to eat again. Queen of spending money. And I was barely saving my money. Emphasis on the barely. So I want y'all to know that there is more to your money than making it, spending it, and barely saving it. So key, what's the more to the money? You can save it. You can spend it. You can invest it. And you can give it. Those are the only four ways to use money as a tool. S-S-I-G. If you're taking notes, write it down. Save, spend, invest, and give. Period. So as you are having this money date with yourself and you're building your lifestyle budget, I cannot tell you what it will expose. I cannot tell you what it will expose. You will be surprised. 
you may have some subscriptions that you don't even use like like that, but you're still paying for it monthly. You may have some bills that you can kind of get rid of. You would probably look at your budget and be like, dang, I'm actually making more money than what I thought I was making. Oh, wow. I spent a whole lot of money eating out. And no, I'm not going to deprive myself, but this is an area that I can cut back on. Okay, so this is the foundation, creating your lifestyle budget and getting in the habit of budgeting because that is how you manage your money so your money isn't managing you. So now let's get into making 2022 your best financial year for the person who wants to pay off debt, increase your income and start saving money. So I got some notes because y'all know your girl can talk and I'm not trying to keep y'all here all night long. I just want to give you some helpful information that you can apply right away so number one paying off debt so when it comes to paying off debt the first thing that you need to do is list out all of the debts that you have list out every single last debt that you have so whether that's credit card debt car payment student loan debt um i know that i think it was extended um as far as like repaying your student loans off i think it was extended but even that that's a debt if you have a mortgage paying that off like whatever debts that you have list out all of your debts this is one important way of basically seeing what you got going on within your finances what all liabilities do you have what are all of those debts make sure you write them down label them and then put the exact dollar amount right beside that label right so after you pay off that after you list all of your debts you can choose two different methods to pay off your debt either the debt snowball method or the debt avalanche method. Now, I'm going to tell y'all my favorite first, and then I'll tell you why, and then I'll also tell you, give you the other option, because I'm not the person that's going to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just an educator, so I'm here to share the education, and then you choose the best method that works for you. So the debt avalanche method is personally my favorite, because with that method, you are paying off the debt that has the highest interest rate first. So the debt that has the highest interest rate first. Now, Kiani, why is that your favorite method? That is my favorite method because if you don't pay off your debt with the highest rate first, you are going to be getting charged more money because the interest rate is higher. So let's talk about credit cards for an example. Most credit card interest rates are anywhere between 18% and 26%. So anytime you leave a balance on that credit card, you are getting charged interest. So essentially you paying, you are paying more money for borrowing the money that you borrowed in the past. And we don't want to do that. Yes, we borrowed the money. Yes, I'm grateful that you loaned me the money. However, I don't want to spend $300 and then a couple of months later, now I owe you $500. Does that make sense? Pump some hearts if that makes sense. So debt avalanche, that is a great method. And I think that it is the more um, effective method to save money over time. On the opposite end, another really good method is the debt snowball method. So debt snowball is a way for you to get some small wins, celebrate your wins, and really, you know, start off with your smallest debt first. So say, for instance, you have like a debt that's $400 and you have a debt that's $1,000 and a debt that's $3,000. So you will start off with paying off the $400 debt first, you know, cheer it up, clap it up. And then boom, you move on to the next debt, the debt that was $1,000. Pay that debt off and then you go to the next one. Boom, the debt that was higher than $1,000. So really, you just have to choose whichever method works, excuse me, whichever method works best for you. But those are two methods that I feel, which is, well, which I feel that everybody can kind of benefit from. So whether you want to tackle the highest interest rate first and save more money over time or you can just tackle the small debts first and get some wins in there and, you know, just keep going on your debt, your debt payoff journey. So paying off your debt, the reason why it's really important is because it frees up some of your money. So for an example, I have a car loan. So the money that I pay per month, the $280 that I pay every single month, say for instance, I will pay off that car. If I paid off that car, now I have $280 extra to put towards savings, to put towards investing, to put towards building the responsible home girl. I have this extra money. 
Versus when you have these debts, you have to consistently throw money at the debt, throw money at the debt to pay it off. Now, I am not the person that is like, oh my gosh, like all debt is bad, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that all debt is bad. If you have debt that is bringing money into your pocket, that is absolutely great. But if you have debt that is just taking money out of your pocket and you're just paying the bare minimums and you're really just going to be stuck in this cycle of paying off debt for longer than what you need to be. No, go ahead and pay off that debt. Get it over with. Free up that money and use it for something else that can go towards your financial future. Period. I do not want us to be putting our money towards things that are not bringing us money. Yes, we have to take out debt sometimes, but at the end of the day, let's pay off aggressively or as aggressively as we can, especially when it comes to credit card debt. That is one that I would say plagues our community and plagues young adults. Most of the times they get this credit card debt in college because somebody was quick to hand them a credit card without handing them the credit education. And it's not right. So now, after you pay off that debt and you know you're, and I'm supposed I'm talking specifically about credit cards now. Now that you pay off that credit card debt or say, for instance, you pay it off. Moving forward, you need to adopt great credit card habits. So keeping that utilization under 30 percent and then paying off the balance in full every single month. I got into the 700 credit club by doing just that. By paying off, not paying off, by paying my car payment on time every single month. And using my credit card, keeping the utilization under 30% and then paying off that balance every single month. And the reason why I share that is because credit can get you what cash can't. So it's very important that, you know, we are on top of our debts and we are aggressively paying it off. We're not just, you know, getting by with the bare minimum. So now number two, increasing your income. Increasing your income, something that a lot of people say that they want to do, that they want to accomplish at the beginning of the year. And I think that it is great. And there are so many different ways that you can increase your income. I would say the easiest way for anybody listening right now, they have a nine to five. Take some time to assess what you have brought to your employer. Um, Maybe things that has been accomplished because of you. Maybe do like a reflection or year review, just something that you can kind of go to your supervisor or your manager and say, hey, I made X, Y, Z happen. I've been here for so and so time and ask for a raise. That is one of the easiest way to instantly increase your income by asking for a raise. The second thing that you can do, you can get a part time job. That's another option. The third thing that you can do is actually take inventory of the skills that you already possess. What skills do you possess right now that you can monetize for somebody else? So whether that's cooking or speaking or teaching something or making something, what can you do really well that you can kind of turn into a side hustle to make extra money? People that live in major cities, if you like driving, maybe you can do Uber or do Lyft. Think about how you can bring in extra money because there is money all around us. There is money all around us. And you can even take the time to invest your money into learning something new. So a great example of that is in 2020, I invested in a wholesaling mobile home course. So now, or really it was a mobile home investing course. So from what I invested in, I took this education learn the skill, and then boom, later on, I applied the knowledge and now that's bringing me in more money. So you may not have the skill, but you can invest in a course, you can invest in a class, you can invest in an ebook to learn a skill. Once you learn it, you can make money. This past Saturday was our first Saturday school where I was helping people understand how to wholesale mobile homes. So not only have I invested in a course, found success doing mobile homes. So I made money from that. Now a whole year later, I'm teaching a class on how to wholesale mobile homes or I just taught a class on how to wholesale mobile homes and I made money off of that. So learn. Your self-education is something that nobody can take away from you and there's so many streams that can come from that. Yes, it's going to take time. This is not the get rich quick, especially if you go the way of, you know, building out a side hustle, building out a business. 
but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. And if you were kind of consuming some of my content, you saw me posting about Saturday school, wholesaling mobile homes, and you weren't able to make the class. I did open up 10 more slots where you can come inside of the community. You can get access to the replay, get access to the Facebook group where I am basically holding you accountable, giving you extra support, and I'm walking you through closing your very first deal. So not only will you make your investment back, but you will make at minimum four figures off of your first deal, period. I'm going to be there with you to walk you through every step of the way. So if that is of interest to you, after this live, you can click the link in my bio and register for the class. The class is gone, so it's not going to be a live class, but you will have access to the replay, the Facebook community, and my time because I'm going to make sure that you close your very first deal. So moving right along, we talked about paying off debt. We talked about increasing your income. Last but not least, start saving money. Start saving money. So surprisingly, or not really surprisingly, because now that I've been in the personal finance industry for quite some time, um, saving money is not like a low income problem. People who make six figures plus are still living paycheck to paycheck. They still have issues saving. And it's like, dang, what is the issue with saving? I feel like it's really a mindset issue. We have been conditioned to believe we work, we pay our bills, we go have fun. But if something was to happen today or tomorrow, I cannot call T-Mobile, my phone provider, and ask them for, for money to help me with my emergency. So I say that to say, you need to prioritize your saving. Nobody can save you. So you need to prioritize your savings, period. So, Kiani, how do I prioritize my savings? You prioritize your savings by paying yourself first. So before you pay a bill, before you go out to eat, before you go shopping, pay yourself first. I would say 10 to 20% of your income. Pay yourself first. Automatically go into a savings account. Automatically. If you can't do it automatically, that is okay. Start with what you can. Every Saturday is Save Something Saturday, and I encourage my community to save at least $20 every single Saturday. So I encourage them to save $20 because 70% of Americans don't have $1,000 in their account for an emergency. So when you think about that, $1,000 is like no money at all. And you mean to tell me 70% of Americans don't have $1,000 in their account for an emergency? They don't. So if you consistently save $20 for 52 weeks, at the end of the year, you will have over $1,000. And that's by just saving a little $20. And I hate to say little, but it's really about the small things that add up over time. And you may be like me, some weeks I might save 20, some weeks I might save 100. But I just want us to get into the habit of knowing that Saturday is a time that you automatically save. Save something Saturday. Save something Saturday. Prioritize your savings. Pay yourself first. If you know you get paid on the 15th and the 30th of every single month, this goes back to this lifestyle budgeting. Lifestyle budgeting. Go ahead and allocate it out. No matter what, I'm paying myself $100. And when you get that check, go ahead and make the transfer. If you like saving your cash, get the cash out and put it wherever you want. Another recommendation I will make is make it very inconvenient for you to save or make it very inconvenient for you to touch your savings. Y'all know most of the time we'll have our checking account directly um, connected to our saving account at the same bank. But as soon as we get in the store and we see something that we want, we're taking money out of our savings account and transferring it to our checking account. Don't do that. We really want to build the discipline to build up our savings so we can do more of what we love. So we're just not getting by and coasting by. Y'all, we are not here to just work and pay bills. I want everybody listening right now to be able to live their best lives. Manage your money so your money isn't managing you. Yes, it's going to take sacrifices. Yes, it's going to take you doing some things different. Yes, it's going to take a mental shift. Yes, it's going to take you telling people no. Y'all, I tell my friends no all of the time. Key, you want to go on a trip? No. And I have no problem saying it because I know what I'm working towards. I have a vision. 
And if I'm taking my money that I'm working hard for and I'm investing it because I know it's going to bring me a greater return later, that's a no brainer for me. I can go to Jamaica later and really enjoy myself, not penny and dime my way to Jamaica. So I want y'all to really get in the habit of managing your money so your money isn't managing you. If you start off with a plan, knowing where you want to go, knowing what you want to accomplish financially, start off there. Then the next thing that you need to do is get in the habit of budgeting. Your budget is your financial GPS. So every time you get some money coming in, make a plan for it. Write your income, write your expenses for this pay period, and then allocate your money into four different areas. Save, spend, invest, and give. After you do that, are you paying off debt? What do you need to do to increase your income? Of course, prioritize your savings. And 2022 will be your best financial year yet. Your best financial year yet. By the time December 31st of 2022 comes, you will not be looking at your money, your account, and saying, dang, I work very hard, but I have nothing to show for it. That's a sick feeling to feel. That you go to work day and night, taking time away from what you're truly passionate about, maybe taking time away from your kids, from your family, and have nothing to show for. So this is the year that we are going to be in our execution bag, period. This is going to be the year that we stop procrastinating and we show up consistently. This is exactly why I created this planner, the For Executors Only Planner. That's the name of it, the For Executors Only Planner. Because if you're not an executor, I'm telling you right off, you don't need to buy this. If you're not an executor, you do not need to buy this. This is a six-month dateless planner to really help you get your life together. Be more intentional about how you want your next six months to look. Make your next six months your best six months by planning and being intentional. Taking the time to write down how you want your days to look, how you want your weeks to look, your weeks to look. And then once the week is over, reflect on all of that. Taking the time to manage your money so your money isn't managing you. I make it very hard for you to make excuses. If you actually use the planner, I make it very hard for you to make excuses. Because why? Even on the front cover, the front cover says, I don't make excuses, I make it happen. I want that to be our model for the entire year of 2022 i don't make excuses i make it happen we're not we're no longer saying oh i don't know how to save or oh i'm horrible with money or oh nobody taught me this so what what you gonna do about it oh i don't make enough money at my job okay so what (laughs) literally so what so what so now that is all that i have for y'all if y'all have any questions please Drop them in the chat below. Um, Comment them. I would love to answer any questions that you may have that's tailored towards your personal financial situation. I'm going to give y'all a little minute to put your questions below. But like I said at the beginning of this live, everything begins with a plan. As long as you have a plan, you have a vision of what you are working towards. Listen, you're going to knock this year out of the park financially. Knock it out of the park. Many of the times we just don't do well because we don't have a plan. We make general statements instead of being specific about what we want to do and how we're going to make it happen. So the first thing that you need to do, start with a plan. Write down your vision. Write down your goal. Number one thing. Number one thing. Remember that this conversation was sponsored by my planner, the For Executors Only Planner. It is a six-month dateless planner to help you stop procrastinating and be more consistent. That's the main goal. Stop procrastinating and be more consistent. I feel like your level of planning, your level of preparation, your quality of life, it is all directly related to how well you plan. Your personal finances, how well you plan. That's really all budgeting is about. Like, for an example, April is right around the corner. I know my mom's birthday is April 16th. I need to plan for that. I'm going to Dreamville Fest on April 2nd. That is something that I had to plan for prior to. So get in the habit of planning, preparing, 
writing your vision down and making it plain. So do we have any questions before I end tonight's live? Remember, um, this past Saturday was Saturday school where I taught everyone or all of my students in my class how to wholesale mobile homes, how I make thousands off of a product that I don't own by wholesaling. And class was amazing. People had good questions. It was very interactive. It was fun. It was a whole situation. And the thing about it is I started over like literally a year ago. So I share that to say you will be very surprised at how your life can change in a year. Very surprised. And honestly, I'm not even done learning all that I can learn from wholesaling mobile homes. But I know more than enough to teach a group of women because it's 13 women. I know enough to teach a group of women how to wholesale, how to wholesale and how to walk them through their process, how to find success, how to really help them get their toes wet into real estate investing. So if that is something that you're interested in, click the link in my bio after this live and you can register for Saturday school. Remember that this is not a live class because the live class was this past Saturday. But what you will get is the replay to the class, access to the Facebook community and access to me because I'm going to walk you through closing your very first deal. We had women in there from South Carolina, from Ohio, from Florida. Like it was a whole situation. It was a good time. It was a good time. So let me see if y'all commented anything. Let's see. Speed. Yes, sis. I got to give them the gems. Got to. You helping me. Yes. I'm happy this was helpful. So much good info. Loving it. Thank you. That's good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, y'all. Any last minute questions before I end this? Remember that you'll be able to catch this on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not subscribed yet. Make sure you download um, or follow us on wherever you listen to your podcast, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I really appreciate each and every one of you all for rocking with me, for supporting the Responsible Home Girl, and for investing in yourselves. I promise you, a year from now, you'll be happy that you started consuming my content. You'll be happy that you started exposing yourself to other sources of information besides what we get on YouTube or what we get on social media. Yes, how slash where to get your executor planner. So you can order your planner at the link in my bio. So um, or you can just go to the responsiblehomegirl.com and you will go to shop and then you'll see the for executors only planner right there. And it is a six-month dateless planner. It is so good. So good. So thank you all for rocking with me again. Always remember, with exposure, execution, and consistency, there is absolutely nothing you can't do. Always remember, with exposure, execution, and consistency, there is absolutely nothing you can't do. So I'll see y'all next time. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing week. Remember, we're not making excuses. We're making it happen. This is the year that we're in our execution bag. All right? I'm going for real now. See y'all soon.